in the last year, we've also had um, the results from the dose finding study of lumbatinib of 24 milligrams versus 18 milligrams. And this was an absolutely crucial study to be done because when the lumbatinib was approved for differentiated thyroid cancer, 24 milligrams was the approved starting dose. However, since that time, out of fear from people who had high blood pressure or um, more fatigue or diarrhea, more and more investigators on their own were starting patients at a lower dose. And the question really came whether or not the lower dose was as efficacious as the higher dose. Because the patients do respond, it was sort of felt like, well, they're responding pretty well anyway, it's just as good, let's keep going. What was really important about the dose finding study, which compared the 24 to 18 milligrams, is that it was blinded. We don't get a chance to get good blinded data like this very often. And this study, I really give it to the sponsors for moving ahead with this. And what happened was patients were randomized and they were all adjusted for toxicity randomly. I mean, not random, randomly, but with the same um, sort of approach. So as an investigator, I didn't know whether or not a patient started at 24 or at 18, but I adjusted the doses and did dose holds and dose reductions as I saw that were needed. And why that's important is it, is it removed the bias, both on, both on the part of the patient and myself, to actually predict how well they're actually going to be tolerating it. And what was amazing about this study is it said two different important things. The first is that it showed that the patients who started at 24 milligrams versus 18 actually had a better overall response rate. And this was statistically significant. So what it, or, and the way it, the way it um, actually in the statistics, it says that basically the 18th, the 18 milligrams failed to show non-inferiority. That's exactly how it was um, written. But what that basically means is you can't go ahead and give 18 and not expect an inferior result. And therefore it supported 24 milligrams being the starting dose. That said, some patients, you know, large number of patients still had dose reductions, but what it means is that first kick that those patients were getting in that exposure at the higher dose was clinically significant. The second important endpoint of this study was safety. And it interestingly showed that there was no difference in, in number of grade three and grade four events between the two groups. So what that basically says is if you start both patients out and you um, adjust your doses and you do supportive care, equally across both groups, there's no reason to expect that the people who start at 24 milligrams will absolutely get a higher number of grade three or grade four toxicities. And therefore it really supports that patients should be started in all cases at 24 milligrams. Um, and and that, that is a very unusual situation where we had a blinded study removing the bias because this, this was a question that was full of patient bias, investigator bias, physician bias. It removed the bias and basically showed us what we were not expecting, which is higher doses, more efficacious, yes, but more importantly, it was not more dangerous. Um, so I think that's a really important study and hopefully that'll be coming out in um, the next year as, far as the manuscript will be published.